It was about uh, two, hold on. 60? 270, yeah. That's our very best. 260. That's our watch best? <laughs> I think so, right? <laughs> PR. I'm exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> Just going so fast. Continue moving. Continue moving. What's that floating fish. Roger. Bridge nav. Charlie. Oh, can that be a... We can add three zero meters to zero nine zero, please. Lizard yeah. fish? No. Halosaur? That's a halosaur. Yeah. Okay. The scoop nose there. <laughs> it looks like it's just kind of going with the flow. Yeah. It's been moving sideways. Uh, how much time do you have left in the bottom? No change? Uh, we are off the bottom at... 12.45. Okay, same, same time. Okay, 12.45. Recover at... 2. two. two. And then Dave's going to, I think, swap out a doohickey for a whatchamacallit or something. Oh, wow. Yep. A Just what? exactly. A Sounds what? like a lot. We work. have to replace a camera. Oh, okay. Uh, is this wire cam? Yeah. Roger. Just, I was hoping to limp it along, but uh, it's gotten to the point where it's... A little cloudy. Pretty much useless, so we're going to take down... Must be coming the, up on a vent. We take down the bow camera and uh, put it in place of the wire camera. Okay. Got it. Wire then, cam is this camera here, which control van can see, viewers can't, but it's... um. The camera that watches the 6-8 cable, which is the cable that connects to Atalanta. So Why it is it called 6-8? Because uh, it's 0.68 inches. inches across diameter. And what's the, describe the structure of the cable. It's steel encased inside the steel fibers steel threads steel wires are power and fiber optics to the vehicle what else is in there robert copper conductors and fiber yeah. optic and They're then a bunch of insulation copper conductors and six fibers i believe okay we'll, well believe it how I far away that. can hercules go away from the ship all of them Okay. Is our, uh, we have a slip ring, fiber optic slip ring that only has three passes. We have a four pass slip ring, but it's not installed. Roger. Annie, was your question how f how far can Hercules from chat? Um, Hercules, go. How far can Hercules go away from the ship? Well, that's a good question. The Cable on the spool right now is seven thousand meters. Oh, but wow. Hercules can only dive to four thousand meters. Right. Uh, but this cruise, we won't be getting past thirty-two, thirty-five hundred. Mm -hmm. Adam, Large. is that the? That's probably yeah. about as deep as we yeah. go. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, sponge. Dead Walteria. Or maybe he's still living. It so looks they, like, <laughs> like they recently reach their fallen. maximum length and then they're too tall and fall over, or what? Yeah, I think some of them like settle on a smaller rock mm. by they accident. Choose poorly. Yeah. Because I Poor think planning. I saw one fell over before that was still attached to its rock. Oh, interesting. Or maybe it was just a small one. Yeah, chat. So 1245 p.m. will be off bottom, and then by 2 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time will recover the vehicles. <gasps> whale shark tracker. Yeah, there's a whale shark tracker. I didn't know that. That's exciting. What's the whale shark tracker? Yeah, um, we have our, our uh, chat posted a a link. A real-time whale shark tracker. Oh. Hey, if they're not going to come to you, Paola, go to you them. go to them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming this is tagged whale sharks? Uh, uh, yes. I, yeah, should be. 
Another Walteria. That's interesting. Hmm. Is this all oceans whale shark tracking or? Eastern Indonesia. Okay, very all specific. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can we take a detour? <laughs> it's going to be a couple weeks. <laughs> oh, they have names. Oh. They do? Sunny. Oh, yeah. Susie. Mac 3. Lenny. <laughs> Mac 3. FG Waterhouse. Mac 3. <laughs> couple rock pens. Yep. It's like we're getting back into a upswing on our large bath puppies. I like how round these rocks are. Yeah. Keep, keep moving, science. Keep moving. <laughs> Bridge nav. Oh, there's a Victor Gorgia. Three zero meters, zero oh, nine zero. Yeah. Or maybe it's a. Oh, that looks like Victor Gorgia. Victor Gorgia. What's the yellow ones again? Paramarisidae. Paramarisidae. I'm not sure I can keep those in my head. <laughs> Another Walteria. Ticopathies, crinoid, is that a chrysogorchid? I don't no, know. No, I think that's another black coral. Yet another fallen Walteria. Right. No, and there's I even another. They are not doing well over here. What happened? They need to find a alternative location. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good one. I know this is rough for you guys, but my family has to live with me. <laughs> Well, about whale falls, what type of whale falls or fossils would you expect to find in this area? And how old could the fossil bones be? Me elaborate on the process. Though. So we've found uh, uh, beaked whale fossils. Right. And they are, they have some amount of iron manganese crust on them. So they've been here for quite some time. Um, we've talked through the various ways that you might be able to date them. So if there was any original carbon in the, within the skeleton, you could use carbon dating, but that will only let you see back about 50,000 years. Oh, wow. Um, and so there's some other isotope systems you could use. I think we arrived at, well, let's take a look at how thick that iron manganese crust is and use that as a qualitative measure and then maybe compare the, the, the structure to any known dated fossils from other locations. Right, thank you. And then you mentioned um, it can go back about 50,000 years. Is there a reason why? Was there is it based on information that's why? The the carbon, uh, the half-life for carbon by 50,000 years, so much of the original carbon-13 will be gone that you can't uh, make the measurement okay. anymore. Okay, thank you. I'm 
Sandy Bottoms. pen we got here? Is that a C pen or just a mm -hmm. stick? Zoom in, Dave. Right up to them. <coughs> Science, is there any interest in core sampling here? Um, core sampling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not? Okay, we're gonna finish this move in 15 meters. Okay. Well, we might run out of the sediment in 15 meters if we have to move 15. Uh. Probably okay here. Oh yeah, because. I just used some rocks. Yeah, we could stop. Argus is way behind. So Argus is behind. Yeah. So we can just let that get dragged a little bit. Good here. Let's do it. Side stab. I like the side stab. I thought that worked really well. It's got style. No look push cores. This would be sample one zero one. One zero yeah. one. Or able to yeah. keep the push going. Swap doing? over to sample or yeah. you good? Uh, yeah. Uh, any of these taken already? Nope, you have all available. Video's gonna change out here in just a little bit. Thanks, Dave. Need the other view. All right. I think you need to come out just to scotch. Yep. All right. Sample tray coming out. All right. Okay. How many are we going to take? Two. Take two. Now up comes. Nav, I have an important question. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Chat, expected dive duration is about 16 hours at a depth of 1986 meters. Well, we're currently at a 15, 15.7 meters. Okay, Currently boxing. exploring a seamount north, northwest up of Palmyra Atoll. Look out, there's a tornado behind us. Who? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's it does cool. That. <laughs> boxing. Okay, going for the stab. Okay. Oh, lovely. Box out a little bit. Yeah, box, box out. Good? Yeah. Let's go. Awesome. Nice.
beautiful. Do we have our blank eDNA? We do not. Oh, this might be a good place. Mm -hmm. I have a box in it. It'd be cool to have like a button to put you right over the tube quiver. Because <laughs> we've seen so many shrimps, I was like trying to name the shrimps. From Shark Tail, Horus, Squeaky, yeah. Little, yeah. Little, <laughs> little, what is that? Is that just a suggested search? Horus, it's the name of our shrimp now. Mm -hmm. Across the board. They're all Horus. They're all Horus. Why is there a chicken? Alright, sample tree. I have no idea. Oh, no. Beautiful. I what? Bruh. <laughs> I'll stop. Uh. Horse, that's the name of our friends. I think we lost most of that. Not all of that. We lost all of that. Okay. Right. Trey going in. You put your right tray in. <laughs> right put. tray out. <laughs> oh, oh. raining. More rain. Coming up. So Samantha, uh, sample 101 was well successful. We're now to sample 102. Roger, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Which push core was the first one? It was the forward most push core. Are those numbered? I, they're not numbered on the diagram, so I just put forward most, second, Roger. forward post. Yes. Do you want me to tray out this time before you actually pull it out? Sure. Okay. Okay, train out. Oh, that's a good one. Too far. Maybe back a little bit. Tray in. Get in the hole, get in the hole. Where's the hole? The holes. Uh, I Dang think it. it's out. All right, we'll go with one push core here. Or you want to try one score? Sounds like a great number. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> one push core. <laughs> one is actually my favorite number anyway, so. Really? Um, yeah. <laughs> no. All right, we got any favorite numbers? Like video can you come now? in some on the box? I can't I see the... Qual numero es tu favorito? Okay, that's good. <laughs> Me encanta. No sé, creo que no tengo. Bueno. 24. 24. Oye, el 24, sí. <laughs> what about the front row? Is there a favorite number? 24 is pretty good. <laughs> 24 is a good number. Uh, so are we not doing a second sample? No one? second sample. Roger. Samantha likes any number with a WP in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. <laughs> not wrong. <laughs> it's 
still never actually have passed over a waypoint <laughs> in all my days. <laughs> Been on the ship for <laughs> 300 years. <laughs> Are we going to try to do the background eDNA sample here that Jules mentioned? Oh, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, before we hop off, maybe we could pull a blank eDNA sample. I'm going to reset the DBL. All right, board come. We have Miskin bottles one and two available. Skinny fingers, skinny fingers. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Awesome. I think one's, I don't know if one's available there. What's it look like on the camera? Oh, it looks like, yeah, actually yeah. one, one is tripped. Oh, yeah. good. I'm glad we got this one then. Just so draw a big X through one. Yeah. Did I just trip it? No, no, it was <laughs> no. pre-tripped. Yeah. Tempo 102. It was just when they mentioned that one and two were available. That, uh this was the skin two. Two, yeah. Yeah. then when you, uh, we're ready. So we do have a question about our ROVs. What are the voltage and current supply requirements that Nautilus must provide to Hercules and Atalanta? Josh giving you a quiz. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what channel are you on? <laughs> How come I'm not here? So the question was what voltage and current? Yeah, that Nautilus must provide to Herc and Atalanta. So uh, we send down a 2700 volt three phase 60 cycle power down the wire oh. at about five amps or so. Five, five uh, KVA supply. And we have the six fibers, but only three that are passed through. That, does that answer the quiz? Yes. <laughs> that does. As far as Thank I can you. Tell. <laughs> you passed. So, what would be like an equivalent, uh, like appliance or equipment that people on people watching could? Uh, relate, relate to? to for that level of power. Um, it's like a washing machine like <laughs> in the U.S. Wait, cover her, <laughs> cover her ears. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
was transformer <laughs> like the the transformers on Atlanta and Herc sort of powers converted from high voltage. So it's like it's like high voltage going into a into an industrial unit. Would it? I don't yeah. know. And then well, we we yeah we start mm -hmm. with 480 volt three phase power. Yeah. At around. A rate of gorge. 30 40 amps. To Magnus Prowess. Turn that into 2700 volt at correspondingly lower amperage. And um, and then it's converted to, uh, well, not completely. Part of it runs, uh, the 2700 volts runs the hydraulic motor on Hercules directly. It's 2700 volt motor. And then we also have a transformer to turn it back into 120 volt power. And that's what runs all the electronics and the lights and all that. So washing machine, got it. <laughs> so, <washing laughs> machine. so yeah. Thank you, thank you for answering that. Well, I that. could guess it what a washing machine runs then. We ready for our move? Yeah. It's, it's Bridge nav. Ready. I'm ready. Okay. Three zero meter is zero nine zero. More paramercida, more black coral. We've moved beyond thumbs up, and now we've just moved to There's a no objection. Standing <laughs> Walteria. <laughs> Finally. Other rock pens. And then chat is asking, does Nautilus generate power at 2700 volts, or does it use step-up transformers? <laughs> fancy, fancy. So, yeah, the ship has several different voltages it uses, which can be a problem sometimes, because right. there's, there's sort of a mix of wall outlets that'll run at 220 and 120, and you plug in a, a U.S. device that's only good for 110 volts. Like a printer. Ah. <laughs> yes, yeah, just like a printer. <laughs> <laughs> And That's even if you're very experienced with this kind of thing, you can still make mistakes. I did not mistakes. do this. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I just know that it has Seems like someone a story on another here. watch. <laughs> <laughs> Who spent many years on this ship. <laughs> Plug the printer into the wrong voltage. Uh, yeah. So it's a mix of 110 volt 60 hertz for all our U.S. Stuff. Ooh, metallic and then the ship is nice European, therapy. so ah, it has 220, right. 50 hertz native power. And, and then there, a lot of things run on 480 volt, three phase power, a lot of the high power stuff. Gosh, it would seem efficient to, to have a global standard. Yeah. Right. You would think that with electric cars, too, but <laughs> hmm. there's different standards. And, th and this is a follow-up question on power. So is there a possibility that the electric electromagnetic bubble around the ROVs disturbs fauna that are sensitive to electromagnetic disturbance, and it causes them to flee before we see them? So we have a lot of things that would cause things to flee. Right, right. So we have these bright lights, and we have a lot of noise. This, we run a hydraulic motor constantly, and it's quite loud, especially in the water. You hear us coming from, you know, 100 meters away, probably. Right. So, and then we're also causing, like, movement of water, and that seems to me to be the, the thing that disturbs the That's animals right. the most. It also, if we touch down on the bottom and you kind of bang the bottom, that startles a lot of the critters. But it's hard to say, like, what is the main, you know, thing that scares them off. But we do see, like, trails of dust in the distance. So we know there's a lot of things we're not seeing because they've, they've scooted away. It's right. Like see us coming or hear us coming or feel uh. us coming. And that's why you see the ROV pilots kind of hovering the vehicle above the seafloor. So they're trying to disturb the bottom as little as possible. And then when they do set down, they look usually for, you know, the rockiest patch. Um, so we're not stirring up sediment. But we also have, you know, sharks and other 
That's animals true. that can sense electromagnetic um, or that have electromagnetic sensors, they are kind of more interested in checking us out. But yeah, that's a good question. There's Thank a you. cool video from, I think it was when Jason was at uh, Cayman maybe, where there was a big earthquake while they were looking at this vent covered with shrimp. And when they didn't know that the earthquake had occurred somewhere far away, but all the shrimp jumped off the vent at one time and then kind of settled back on wow. it. Wow. That's interesting. So I was out with Alvin last year. And we did an experiment where we came in with all our main lights out in a just one little dim red LED light, really dim, and came up to the vent that was covered in shrimp. And then we sampled shrimp and then used the RNA later to preserve them in their state that they were in. And hmm. then we turned the lights on and looked to see if the shrimp reacted, and they didn't. Hmm. Oh. And then sampled them again the ones that had been exposed to light and did the RNA later. So we had the, the before and after. Interesting. And I don't know the results of that, but just the shrimp didn't react at all when the lights came on. Huh. Surprising. Hmm. Would it be possible to have an ROV of this capability that was fully electric? And before that gets answered, do you want to keep moving here? Yeah, let's keep, we can going. keep moving. Bridge now. So indeed. So uh, the Jason ROV is three zero meter electric. zero nine zero. It doesn't. It has a hydraulic motor, but it doesn't run all the time. So they can run silent. They can, you know, just turn stealth every, mode. Yeah, they can go stealth. Do they find that they're seeing more mobile critters that would normally take off? Know if Has anyone like, studied that? Yeah, I don't know if anybody's looked at that. Maybe. I guess anecdotally. Curious yeah, for folks who... Yeah, I don't who, really notice a yeah. difference. Haven't noticed a difference. So Alvin's also all electric. It yeah. It can run silent. Well, like you said, the big... Uh, one big thing is the motion of the coral. vehicles create. Oh, yeah. Can we or zoom on the cup coral, please? Tube anemone, maybe. Circle it? Oh, right in the middle. Yeah. I think that's a cup. Based on the white skeleton mm -hmm. knee part. Cup coral. Hello. I think we got it. Okay. So actually, I guess Jason always has to run uh, the vertical thruster because they're light. So all the ROBs are kept light, hmm. so they float to the surface if you lose them. So it's kind of always has to run a little bit of down thrust to keep on the bottom. But there's some ROBs that have variable ballast systems. If you had an all-electric vehicle with a variable ballast system and you could be neutral and be totally silent. So Alvin Alvin has uh, variable ballast and can run silent. Have uh, electric manipulators improved over time? There is I know that I think it's Saab has come out with a new electric manipulator that Josh was sort of looking at. Mm. Uh, but we're a little I <laughs> want to see more people operating it and see what kind of reliability it has. The first Jason ROV had an electric manipulator and it was a maintenance nightmare. Mm -hmm. And I guess the ones I've seen have been pretty like underpowered. Yeah. Yeah, the, the original Jason manipulator couldn't pick up a, a double major water sampler. All right. You had to suck it in, like, into your armpit, and then go straight mm. up, and then you had one shot to try and 
<laughs> get it in the hall <laughs> on the way down. Oh my God! And then if you didn't make it, yeah, they go right back in, like, start the whole. Wow. Yeah. And that that vehicle also didn't have any sort of autos. You, there was no uh, auto altitudes or I guess they had an auto heading was the only thing it had. So you had to fly it the whole time you're trying to manipulate. Yikes. Yeah, it was. Did you have two people doing that then? No. And double yikes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Single yikes. Ooh, wild chariot in the sand. Oh, fallen. You want to zoom in on anything here? Seems to be the story of these I think I'm good. Things, huh? Thank you. Okay. No zooms. No zoom. I will get some still cam pictures. Yeah, we see a lot of them fall over. Mm hmm And then there's, like you said, there's more of a smaller species and size. Science, keep moving. Keep moving. Is that yeah. so Do you mean the sponge? Yeah, the sponge. Well, we've seen a lot of them just... Yeah, I'm not really sure why. It's kind of interesting because a we lot of the ones we've seen zero fallen zero. over are pretty large. So right, right. I mean, <laughs> they all got to Lula. that size. Yep, Umbulula, Anthoptilum, Paramaricea, um, Umbelopathies. Rocks. Is that a man? Stop crying. <laughs> Stick a pathies. Some water, <laughs> I think. Oh, and then uh, wouldn't it wouldn't it be possible to put the high beams on some ROV to see a large piece of land in this total darkness? Maybe about. Over the original question was, uh, for example, 150 meters or more. Would Oof. it be possible? 150 no. meters. Like, no. but just by using the, you know, the high beams, the lights. No. There's. I I have seen higher powered lights on a vehicle, uh, and right. you can see farther, but. Uh, you you know, get a lot of backscatter. Exactly. Yeah, ah, it depends what's yeah. in the water. So if you use if you use use blue green light. That travels much further through water because the red light oh. is uh, absorbed very in a very short range. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah. So actually, there's there is like Alvin has some green lights, blue green lights that it uses, and you can see things further out without you get like less backscatter. It's sort of like fog lights in a car, and you can see further out, and it's good. Especially if you're trying to find something that's yellow, because hmm. it really highlights yellow well at a distance. So a lot of the elevators and things have yellow flotation, so you can see that quite a ways away. I suppose we should describe what an elevator is, because we don't really oh, use them right. on this ship. But uh, it's it's this pretty simple, like a a platform with. Uh, things sticking up in the middle that has some flotation and some communications and tracking and stuff on it and it's basically you can put some heavy stuff on this platform like a an experiment that you want to deploy on the seafloor or a large pump that you want to use for a while uh -huh. and you let it free fall to the ocean floor Sometimes you reposition it with a ROV or a, an HOV to where you want it. And then when you're done, you can either acoustically or manually release weights from the bottom so that it then it floats back up and the ship picks it up. So uh -huh. pretty common to use it with an ROV when you have really long dives. So all our boxes are pretty much filled with samples, but we could have an elevator, we could offload samples onto the elevator and stay down on the bottom and let the samples come back up. That's really cool. Yeah, we've um, deployed them in the past on cruises with Ocean Networks Canada, uh, which will be a partner, a research partner that we'll be working with again uh, in, gosh, just a couple of weeks. 
Um, so if you're curious about more of that deep sea engineering work, tune in for that expedition. Uh, we'll be working with them for several weeks off of British Columbia, off of Vancouver Island, maintaining an 800 kilometer uh, seafloor observatory, which is basically an 800 kilometer um, power cable on the seafloor that runs through many different deep sea habitats um, with different nodes of scientific instruments along the way. So we're doing a um, bit of work with a cabling ship, uh, lace new cable, where we'll be bringing down new instruments, we'll be maintaining old instruments. So um, yeah, a lot of interesting devices. I'm not, I'm assuming there's probably something like an elevator um, that we'll be using during that cruise as well this year. Thank you. And then um, what about, oh, and then what about high power lights on Atalanta? Would that work? Chat says. Before you answer Asks. that one, science, uh, keep moving. Keep, keep moving. moving. Bridge, nav. Three zero meters, zero nine zero. Palisama. And we're going to be starting going upslope again, ROV. Yeah. Yeah, we already are, but more steeply. More steeply. <coughs> so there, there is quite a few lights on Atalanta currently. Right. I think 16 or something lights on it. Oh, wow. Yeah. And they're all... It's a really large Walteria. If the viewer is watching, I can, I can turn off a few of them. They can see the... Yeah, you got to be kind of closer to the bottom to really get the effect of the lights, like as far as how much it lights up the bottom. Right. You need so to be closer. So we're, he's he's flying uh, 20, 20, 20 meters, 20 meters, 20 meters yeah. up. Oh, wow. So, but oh, you can wow. see how when he, if he turns the lights on again, you can see how it sort of lights up the back of her right. a little bit on the bottom. But you really need to be kind of lower than that, like within 10 meters or so to really light it up. Again, you get uh, backscatter uh, with uh, particles in the water uh, that uh, diffuse and refract the light. Right. And then uh, it's also attenuation of the light uh, through the water, uh, yeah. especially red light frequencies. So that's why it tends to have a bluish uh, tint to it. Thank you. Thank you for the explanation. Uh, chat, the laser is 10 centimeters. It's used for measurement. Take a that one or first the question. So if I turn off Herc's lights for a second here, you can see how much light we get. How uh, much light from uh, up above. Right. Oh, it looks like there's a, <laughs> there's a cat out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a really dark night. <laughs> if we turned off everybody's lights, then it would be proper dark. Yeah, <laughs> then it would be really hmm. dark. As dark as dark can be. <laughs> then Josh would definitely be <laughs> messaging and saying that. That's the moment when you want Dan to walk by the the TV screen and yeah. the mess when all the lights are out. <laughs> <laughs> the Hercules does not have a hydrophone. Well, not anymore. Correct doesn't routinely have one. It's oh, been okay. put on occasionally, yeah. Okay. You would just hear the, the noise from the hydraulic motor mostly. Oh, uh, okay, okay. You can deploy one that's separate from the ROV and then that records and then pick it up, you know, move away and then come and pick it back up. One cool thing when I had one on Alvin was that one of the ways they communicate is through an underwater phone basically 
converts your voice to pressure waves, and you can hear that on the hydrophone. Yeah. So you could talk to the ocean, basically? Yeah, you can. You can <laughs> and the ocean, ocean talks back. Yeah, yeah, you can hear whales and <laughs> stuff like that, yeah. That's so cool. You can hear the, the boat on the surface, and you can hear them. Wow. Like, when they're running machinery on a ship, you hear it, depending on how close you are. Wow, they're very sensitive then. Yeah. We also had a question about um, Big Herc. So how much would it cost to build? Well, not Her well Hercules or just an ROV at that size? And oh, boy, I could tell you. Uh, Depending who builds it, you're probably talking right. four to eight million. Wow. Yeah, it also depends on the depth rating. Yeah. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, the, the deeper you go, the price goes up exponentially right. for the equipment. It's really, wow. it's like 10 times, like, you know, it's you have all crazy. The surf surface operating, uh, you know, Pretty surface snap. support equipment as well. With, yeah, that's right. Are you counting the you know the so. crane you need to launch it and right uh, and the, all the electrical equipment yeah so you can add a uh, you can add another another million on that yeah wow and then you got to balance like the size of the rov to the 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 deeper it goes the the more the more foam you need and right. the foam right. weighs and then you need a bigger frame to carry the foam and yeah, Yeesh. and you need more power to move it through the water now, and it's like it all, you know, wow. it adds on top of each other. Right, you're going single body, and you need a specialized <laughs> heave comp winch. Yeah. yeah. And don't forget the control vans. You're going to need some of those, too. <laughs> yeah. Right. Other management systems. Mm -hmm. How much does one expedition cost for the Nautilus to have us all <laughs> here? Like ballpark ballpark uh like 1.5 to 2 million what wow. i mean think well, about how many yeah, people are out here yeah right, yes it's really the people costs and the fuel that are that are kind of the driving forces for that and that's actually you know pretty reasonable reasonable <laughs> yeah yeah I wow mean, I've been involved in offshore operations that have, um, you know, starting off at around 800,000 a day. Uh, what? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Holy cow. Sorry, we don't have an infinity pool here. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we know you're used to that luxury. Was, <laughs> <laughs> that was just the champagne cost. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Yeah. But it's, that's uh, just bareboard charter, and then you have all your consumables and everything on top of that. So mm. you're you're running over a million a day. Your your day rate's broken down to 15 minutes. Your hour. Wow. You fall wow, behind on schedule. Wow. Oh, there's, wow. there's a living one. Wow, there's a living one. Yay! Really large one. But looks like it's gonna. It does fall seem a over, bit leany. you think? Picked a good rock, though. Yeah, it did. It That's did. A, and a great spot on it. It's got a little leverage. Want to zoom in, Dave? It doesn't look like a very sturdy base, does it? Oh. Hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. a small base. <laughs> Yeah. The no wonder they're toppling the over. The pattern is cool, though. It kind of looks like the Voronoi, uh, you know, kind of like pattern between different points. Mm. It, mm -hmm. I think it looks, looks pretty strong for a minimal amount of material, basically. Yeah. I love the patterns of Euplectelids. They're so cool. Like woven baskets. Samantha, are we arriving waypoint five? I was going to say, I was, what? I, we've got a couple of meters to Don't announce that we're it. finally doing oh, it. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs>
This is Samantha's birthday gift to you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if Robert goes a little bit uh, more like 133, Hurt could actually go over the waypoint. <laughs> we got a ground fault there. Aren't row. You want to figure out what it's from? It's not, it's not a uh, critical level. But okay. <laughs> right before we get to the waypoint. <laughs> oh, gotta go. Gotta yeah, go. Call it. <laughs> Do you remember that dive? So I don't remember where it was, but we were going back to get a um, to find a crate of instruments that were left on the seafloor, and the USBL wasn't working, and it took the full watch to get there. Yeah. And then you were reaching out yeah. with the manipulator arm to pick up this crate, and right as you did, you it were like, "Oh, we gotta go, we gotta go!" Yeah, because it, it was Argus's. I know. Bottle flooded. It was bad. Yeah. Oh, got, oh what? Got water in the main electronics bottle. It was oh, not good. No. That was three days of rebuilding that yeah. bottle, like 24/7. Yeah. But it was so painful. It literally took us four hours to find the thing, and then we no. found it. <laughs> the arm was almost yeah, there. Like inches away. <laughs> <laughs> I think you made it even like made contact, but hadn't yeah. closed the claw. Wow. Well, because I, I didn't want to get attached to it if, uh, yeah. if we were going to lose power. Cause, exactly. You know. If you, you got a water detect and yeah. alarm, and like the next thing that's going to happen is going to go dark. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, it reminds me, we did a search for a ocean bottom seismometer that was trapped in a lava flow at the Ooh. East Pacific Rise. And, oh, wow. And we thought we knew where it was. So, like, if you look at the track, it's like first kind of random wandering and then eventually gets to like a search pattern and eventually we kind of found it. But I wonder if you guys had the same thing. You're like, first you kind of just look around randomly and then you're like, we got to get serious about this. Yeah. yeah. Well, cause you're thinking it's going to be right, right here. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So you and just do not. a spaghetti around for a bit and then you're like, <laughs> oh, it's not here. <laughs> <laughs> we had a junction box that weighed like 600 pounds. It's just a, st a a steel frame, and they it broke loose right at the surface off the off the winch. So you would think that thing would go straight down. Yeah. And we searched and we searched. And it took a week of wow. searching. Wow. And we found it 600 meters away. What? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> but if you imagine 600 meters away in a straight line. That's you. In order to find that, you kind of have to search a two-kilometer diameter yeah. circle. You know. And they just kept saying, "No, there's Can no way it could it could be that far away." All like, right. Well, like the physics just says it's not going to happen. Can you zoom in, Dave. Trig. <laughs> oh. Huh? Oh. Trigonometry. Wait. Tri oh, trig. <laughs> yeah. Oh. What is? What this? is that? Hmm. Eh? This, uh, this looks kind of shrimp-like. Right. <laughs> what are you? But like armored. Yeah. Oh, we've not seen one of these before. Also, the ship has stopped, by the way. Okay. Great. Excellent. That looks like a cross between a horseshoe crab and a shrimp. Nice. What the? Chat, any possible ID? What is that? Hmm. That's crazy. Oh, here we go. Uh, Okeanos Guide. Polly Kelliday? Polly Chelliday? Interesting. I've got it open on the nav computer if you want to take a look. Oh, yeah. Oh. That's it. Yeah. Oh, yep. I have not seen this before. That's really cool. Um. I'm going to start pulling up there. Could it be a homeuron asper? <laughs> Pretty likely. <laughs> 
That's exactly it. That's cool. Okay, I'm going to get Thank uh, you. moving. Yep. Point five. Woo. Let's go. If you look off to your starboard oh. side, you'll see <laughs> <laughs> a little flag in the sand. Waypoint five. <laughs> oh yeah. If you look really closely, there's a little banner that says, "Congratulations, Samantha, <laughs> you did it. Yeah. Finally made it to a waypoint." <laughs> Level up. <laughs> <laughs> What's that say beneath it? The princess is in another castle? <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Signed, the Urchin King. <laughs> 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 Villain number one. <laughs> You've collected three gold coins. <laughs> Deep. Actually, it makes sense because the Urchin King also tells us to not go to certain waypoints. So this does actually check out. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Is there an Urchin King in SpongeBob? <laughs> no. <laughs> Some, I think no. There's, there's something <laughs> rings a bell somewhere. <laughs> but thanks for being so eager about that one. <laughs> that was like a pressing question. <laughs> this just in. Breaking question. Stop questions. the ship. Breaking news. <laughs> is there? Have two sons, though. That's true. <laughs> um, Robert, where are you going, by the way? Just wondering. What are you talking? Well, <laughs> you're going up. <laughs> you're going in a different direction than we're going to be going. We're going to be going. I was getting close <coughs> to Atlantic because I was hearing from my trusty co pilot uh, that we were having issues. Oh, Roger. Okay. Sonar. <laughs> oh, yeah. In that Roger. case, let me see where we're heading. Argus is looking that way. Herc's looking this way. So apparently, Plankton in SpongeBob dresses as a sea urchin. Uh, what? <laughs> TJ was right. Yeah. Huh. Plankton, the character in SpongeBob, dresses as an urchin. Okay, there you so go. So you're right. <laughs> <laughs> and SpongeBob's evil nemesis. What's uh? What species is? He's, <laughs> he's, like, he's not a he's not a sponge. He's not a clue. Is he is he one of the the oh my god sea pigs that we seen yesterday? Or <laughs> no. uh, this uh. could be your costume. <laughs> huh? You don't look happy. <laughs> a sea urchin infestation at the Krusty Krab. Wow. I don't think I've ever watched Spongebob. Hmm. Really? What? Yeah. I think it was just wow. kind of like out of my time window. Of what about your children's time window? Yeah. No, I think it was before their time window. Uh, so is it is it dead? <laughs> Spongebob? Uh, <laughs> no. Never, Sponge never was alive. Dead. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it's if it's uh, everyone know, watching at home, SpongeBob is perfectly fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's not dead. Not dead. Definitely not dead. The SpongeBob the Aquanauts and uh, Octonauts. Yeah, Octonauts. I, yeah, Octonauts. I've seen that oh, before. Yeah, yeah. Octonauts and Peppa Pig. I was. Uh, I yeah. remember yeah. Peppa Pig. When you were growing up, that was their choice, along with. Hmm. What was it? My granddaughter loved Peppa Pig. Just absolutely loved the <laughs> show. So I used to watch it a lot with her as well. Aww. But uh, it being an import and on uh, PBS, it's a whole generation of kids now that uh, grew up on Peppa Pig that, uh, you know, will say, Mommy, can we have a tomato? <laughs> <laughs> Let me zoom in, Dave. 
Oh, sorry. I'm going to reset Side the USB over memory. here. Hmm, someone took a chunk out of that. Reset the DVL, I mean. Snack. It's like we're growing. Right. Oh, yeah. Cool. I think I'm in the skip munch lunch mode in favor of sleep today. Yeah. <laughs> I was just yeah. thinking that. I'm going straight to sleep. And chat says, quote unquote, SpongeBob is dead, Nautilus 2023. No. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Megan. <Yeah. laughs> Press release. No. We got some damage control to do. Oh. We gotta walk that back. <laughs> okay. Change of plans. We're going to oh, buy SpongeBob. The Thunder actions the of game. our employees do not reflect the values yes. of the Ocean yes. Exploration <laughs> Trust. Um, can we get a distance update? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. By. And then what are your echolocation skills telling you about SpongeBob right now? <laughs> Doing fine. <laughs> oh, there we go. Confirmed. Oh, thank God. He's, he's more of a shallow water. Oh, yeah. Anyway. It's true. 720 meters, and we're at 1113. 1113. Who voices SpongeBob? That's a. Hmm. You got a lot of SpongeBob questions today. Who <laughs> 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 voices SpongeBob? I'm more Tom of a Patrick Star fan. Kenny. <laughs> Tom Kenny. We saw him earlier John today. Kenny. Yeah, Tom Kenny, Tom. and then for our favorite star, Patrick, uh, Bill. Just Bill? Just Bill. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I actually checked out. <laughs> <laughs> Not the last one. The Bill. Yeah. The Bill. <laughs> Bill. I think, well, I don't, okay, Jules, you need to help me with this. What's up? Is it Fager Bake? Bill, you plucked it. Fager Bake? <laughs> I can see why you didn't say it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to try. Yeah. F A G R B A K K E. Fagerback? 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 No, oh, Fagerback? Huh. Fagerback. Yeah. Right. Huh. are you ready to move? Bill. I'm already doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, la dee da. <laughs> not waiting for us. Ship, are you ready to catch up? Fresh <laughs> now. <laughs> So what are what are the small corals that we're seeing here, Jules? Three zero meters. These are one one zero uh, today. There's some black corals, umbelopathies. Those are the dominant species over here. And zoom in, Thank you. Dave. Mm -hmm. One one zero is our new heading. Bearing. Pathy pathies. My son has watched more Simpsons episodes than wow. I have. Wow. And I that, grew that up is, on The Simpsons. I love The Simpsons. But <laughs> Me too. Not a great <laughs> learning environment for yeah. kids. The Spanish version is very funny compared to the really? English version. Spanish yeah. version? Yeah, and the one who voices Homero. <laughs> Homero? <laughs> Homero Simpson. <laughs> yes. What are the names of the others? Uh, El, El Barto? Bamboo? Bart. Oh. Bart? Berta? Berta? Maybe. I don't remember. Lisa? What about Lisa? Lisa. 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 Say, March. Say it's just March. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What's this one? That's another black coral. Uh, maybe Parentopathies. Maybe Lilipathies. And it uh, looks like a bamboo. Lip. Bamboo, yeah. And a Hemicorallium. Starting to get back into some diversity, I guess. We'll finally got another. I don't know where we saw, at what depth we saw the fancy stuff before, but probably pretty close. Yeah, I think that's um, Lilipathies. Looks an 
awful like a lot like Parentopathes. Is that a Rita Gorgia? Off to There's, the left. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Arita Gorgia. Cool. Not much uh, Chrysogorgia, though. No. Oh, except. Except for that one. Except the one right in front of me? Yeah. Metallogorgia. I love these. That's a great shot. That's great, thank you. Science, keep moving. Yeah, keep moving. It's a nice squat lobster. Zoom in, Dave. Yeah, it looks like it. And that is, mm, I don't think that's what is it doing? Or to just hanging out, having a good looks time. Like it's like some umbrella pappies. Hello, friend. <laughs> just try to reach. <laughs> Stick of science. Poke of science. <laughs> science poke. He's looking oh, it's straight both at us. Looks angry. That's why they're called crabs. <laughs> Look at those arms. Right? And they're all like, aww. It's trying to be very fierce. <laughs> <laughs> this one can get a pass. The sea spiders, no. <laughs> Bridge, no. Is that the uh, face face sized sea spider? Yeah, yeah. Three zero meters yeah. and one zero. Mm -hmm. That shouldn't be. Oh. Gosh. I mean, he looks you can see that crinoid vicious, skeleton like back there. Fangs. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, that's how they look. I think it's the cute little claws. Yeah. <laughs> but the face, like, you know. <laughs> Look at that. All right. Yeah, I've had the face is a little scary. Resting crab face. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> 40 minutes left. <laughs> Just keep oh. it together for 40 minutes. Oh, there's a Victor uh, Gorgia. A dragon here. Zoom in, Dave. Shrimp under the rock.
देखो so we have this question actually chat you see a lot of animals so the question is wh why is there no animals is it about depth or range now i see one animal so this viewer sees one animal um can you help? they're probably like a right. little uh delayed from what we're seeing right um but it's it is true that the the biology is patchy Right, so we'll see patches of things of, of high concentration or high density and then patches without. There's also plenty of things that we're not seeing. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, just because they may be avoiding us. <laughs> or they're too small. Right. Or, they're or they're too they're small. That's true. Or they're a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. Nice one. Very pretty. Anthoptilum, Paramaricidae, Lillipathies. Astroschema. Uh, bamboo coming up, I think. Bamboo. Oh. What huh. is that? Oh. Let's see. Very tall bamboo. Very tall. <laughs> what just keeps oh, going? Wow. What? Uh -oh. oh. What? <laughs> it's a Ritagorgia. Extremely tall bamboo. Oh, man. Oh. No, oh. What? That was a surprise. Wow. Um, yeah. uh, that, was, <laughs> going. that was much taller than expected. Wow. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. That's so okay. It'll be all right. What's your altitude? Six, Six meters. Wow. This is around that high. That's incredible. Yeah, it's hard to see an Atlantic ham. That is massive. There we go. It's doing oh. very well here. Left hand side of Atlantic ham there. Oh. oh, yeah. Wow. Huh. <laughs> oh. We're going uphill a little bit, so that altitude ah. estimate's probably overestimate, but it's still. 15 feet high. That's incredible. Wow. So, uh, Iridogorgia? Mm hmm. Okay. Magnus Boralis. Hi, Long. It's like second story window height kind of thing. Whoa. No way. Oh, <coughs> so cool. Can you imagine if that was peeking into your second story window? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> wow. Can we get a, a zoom? Um. The ship has stopped. On the inside there? Yeah. <coughs> there you go. Thank you. Oh, yeah, look at that. Can we zoom in there? How long do you think it took for that squat lobster to get up there? Did it float? <laughs> That's a very good question. No, oh, it's a great angle in Atlanta Cam. Let's see how bad Oh. It sure is. I'm getting some good still cam pictures too. Pretty. Looks very healthy. That's cool. Thank you. Mm. 
Right, moving on. Moving on. Uh, so now we're starting to get these guys again. Mm-hmm. Those primnoids? Yeah. Cool. Which was one of the dominant species in the last high density region. Yeah. We haven't seen many stalked crinoids either. Or sponges. All right, I'm good. I'm good. Thank what you. happens when it gets We're to good. the edge? <laughs> That's a good question. That's his waypoint. Yeah. <laughs> So it's a good time to tell you all that uh, we've gone 830 meters. Oh, well, at the end what? of the step, we'll have gone 830 meters during our four hours, which means we've averaged 207 meters an hour. <laughs> no. <laughs> we are so still average. Let's go. We are, average. we are our average. We are not the ship average <laughs> or the watch average. No, no, no. We are. Isn't 200? The, the watch wa average is 250 meters. The age <laughs> 12 oh. average is 200 meters. Hey, we, we've improved. It's true. It's like it's a personal best. Seven personal meters. best. Personal best. Personal, personal best. best. You know? How do they manage that? <laughs> 200 if you're wow. What are they doing? Oh, look at this Zooming past them. I mean, who knows? Maybe that team science hero has a lot of uh, FOMUSK. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> or do we have the FOMOS? We got the FOMOS. We got it. That's why we always we stop. stop at okay, yeah, you're right. Yeah. We don't want to miss out on anything happening with these corals. It's probably the only time humanity is going to be able to see them. Right. That's yeah. so true, Paola. Just trying to make us feel better. <laughs> I mean, we can make them feel worse. Either one works. <laughs> These, those tall Ritagorgia were pretty fabulous. Those were right. pretty great. Those are beautiful. Highlight. I got it. Are they the unique? Ritagorgias. Are they unique to this area? Or no. Or, or, and that height They're not. That, that length. Is I that mean, that special? height wait, 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 I've wait, never yeah. seen before. But you can, I've seen a Ritagorgia in okay. most dives that I've watched. Okay. But that, but that, those that tall actual ones. height, those That tall was ones. anomalous. I've never seen that. <laughs> we've, we've seen them before, but I'm actually going to find out which region we've seen that height. If our website works. There we go. Deep Ocean Education Project Dope. says they viewed a coral 1,600 meters on Ritagorja. Wait, 1,600 meters? That long. At that depth? <laughs> that would be, I'm guessing that's depth. <laughs> okay. Still thinking what? 1,600 meters long. Yeah, the Deep Ocean Education Project is <laughs> a collaborative um, Smith. education website that includes Falcor, Okeanos, and Nautilus nice. finds. Yeah, I was like, that can't be right. <laughs> that's not. Oh, <laughs> that's tap. So uh, yesterday. I was like, what? <laughs> here's one. <laughs> yesterday, we post, Nautilus posted a <laughs> video on YouTube, uh, Spiral Iridogorgia Coral Taller Than ROV Hercules. <laughs> Yep. Um, a named guillot northwest of Kingman Reef at around 1,200 meters deep. Ritagorgia magnus borealis coral was pushing three meters tall. 
three meters. <laughs> Oh. Well, but the six meters was. Well, I meters already was already locked down our highlight. Yeah, but yeah. it was it was hovering, but it wasn't the coral wasn't straight up and down. I think vertically. This one is, is four hundred thousand square miles. <laughs> so okay, but well that's just that's showing off. <laughs> How many acres? <laughs> okay. I want a number. They're quite. Quite large, we'll say Quite that. Quite large. I'm getting vertical here, huh? Well, we're 10 meters out. We could add one more 20 meter step. What do we think? Mm. Uh. Let's see, maybe wait till they get over the top or whatever Thumbs this up is. From we, can we can see over the top. You can? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Bridge, right, another one. Three zero meter is one one zero. Maybe we get to count our last move, whether or not it's completed. So call in a one kilometer. <laughs> <laughs> send over. <laughs> okay, so now we'll have gone eight sixty meters by the end of this day, or, or sorry, by the end of our watch, which means we're at 2.15 an oh, hour. Man. Can we go full beans to the next waypoint, please? <laughs> 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 Gotta reach that average. I don't know if beans applies here, I just like saying it. Nope, that's certainly where beans applies. <laughs> okay, great. Well, I'll let the bean master speak for himself. But. Bean master. <laughs> the bean king. Bean king. Bean stewer. Large bamboo. What's going on on here? You zoom in, Dave. Uh, black coral. Mm hmm. A couple of black corals. Schizopathidae. Umbellopathies behind it. Yep. Umbellopathies. Um, that one could have been Lilipathies. Oh, this yeah. very green one here. Oh, can we zoom on that, please? Zoom in, Dave. It's a little bit of blue, no? Yeah, does it have yeah. oh. what? <laughs> oh, red uh. color. Cool. Huh. Green, blue, it's green. paragorgia. Yeah. We tried to sample before a green one, and we lost position. Yeah, we didn't get oh. that one. This is that still on the list? Should we try? Oh, where would we put it? Oh, oh that's right. You can slurp it. Uh, actually, it could go in F or D. There's just rocks in there. Bridge, Nav. Go oh, crying. What are we thinking? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, hold position. Looks like a Christmas tree with a star on top. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like that. This is going to bring down our uh, meters per hour average, you know. You know what? <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> it's worth it. For science. Yeah, but it increases the corals per hour. <laughs> That's true. It does.
Oh. No comms. That was unrelated, sorry. For the, for the most recent um, <laughs> black corals, maybe just put it at Antipatharia. For now. Anti... Patharia. Just order level. <laughs> Could have been trisopathies, what we've been seeing. Oh, I might have solved that. <laughs> this would be sample one, Just as I was three. giving up. Um, what are we going for? I think where you're, if you're looking down at that limb, that's, oh, well, maybe uh, up well. there. Um, where is there a good healthy part? Lots of blue. Yeah, that end there looks good to me. You mean this one down here? Yeah. Yep. Coral. Coral. Blue morph. Plexorid. Yeah, and then um, which are pretty rare. Chat says these green blue plexorids mm -hmm. are are kind of rare. Is that yeah. true? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh wow. I we don't, don't know that we'll make it to the top. Them. No, but but we'll at least get in the depth range where we saw the density before. So they're not usually this color. No, they're usually oh, okay. yellow. Yeah, it's pretty neat when you find one. Do you say Paragorgia or Plexorid? Plexorid. Turn the reverse, right, swap right. over to sample. So this uh, can yeah. go in Starboard Biobox yeah. F. Wait, oh, we only have a rock wait, wait, there. Wait. Let me uh, turn off the thruster over there. Okay. All right. This will be sample 103. Woohoo! Okay to bump out. <laughs> yeah, bump out. Where's this going? Era. F. Hello, Dwight. Hello, Dr. Coleman. Like SARS can be interesting to look at. Yeah, yes. I'm excited to see this in person, up close. So Dwight, are you here to uh, take over for all of us? <laughs> headset. My headset wasn't in yet. Oh, that's okay. Hey, Hi. Hi. I was wondering if you were taking over for uh, all the all the roles. <laughs> <laughs> I can do it all at once. <laughs> Here, really? <laughs> Except pilot. <laughs> so we're just finishing up this uh, sample. Ship stable. Nice. A little bit longer to go. It's Still, we're going to stay on schedule for 12.45 off bottom? Yeah. Great. Is that about right to get to the surface for, uh, uh, for two? Let me see. For middle of the watch. Yeah, we have to. Uh, we had to you do it off cycle. In a row. <laughs> I know. Trust me. I feel bad about it. But it's better than a middle of the night launch and recovery. Yeah, Dwight. From this step, that's about seventy minutes. Um, by the time you get up a little higher here, 
to waypoint six, well, you're not going to get very far. So yeah, it'll probably be about an hour to the surface. So if anything, we'll be a little early. Well, then, uh, then maybe uh -huh. we'll try to go a little higher up the slope. We'll see. Okay. Yeah, you can just spend more time on the bottom. Look at that large sponge. That's cool. Where it is everybody? <laughs> Must be a really good lunch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are doing so good on this watch, you know? We don't want <laughs> to... We're all watching 12. TV. <laughs> Samantha, are we holding position for watch change? We are, yep. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Oh, birthday hat. Uh -huh. Is this your birthday paper airplane? Let's look at this sponge while we're waiting. Uh, Roger, I'm going over there. We're pretty stretched out. Let's okay. see what happens here. Yeah, everything is just barely reachable, right? So look, look at this. No. Oh, Argus is quite out of line. We got to move, right? I can't look at that. Sorry. The bags? The bags? Oh, probably, but uh, I don't know where. Uh, yeah, just use this one if you want. All right, how's the uh, watch settling in? We're, we're good up here in the front. Excellent. Um, sorry about your sponge. We were just way out of position there. Yeah, no get worries. It. And then Atalanta was getting very close to the hill. Yep. Boogie. Yep. Okay, so I guess we're lined up okay. Uh, Cheyenne, how... I guess... I'm not, I'm not sure how they've been doing these moves, but we can just take small steps maybe. 
but yep. tr but try to keep the ship moving until you until the pilots need you to stop. Yep, sounds good. So we've been coming up the slope here. Yeah. Like so. Swan. I went. Yeah. Okay. I know there's been a lot of stuff. Can you bring the Atlanta heading around Which to awesome. like uh, I don't know about a hundred? I say yeah. We are pretty much looking full for samples. samples. All right. Awesome. Got a full cart today. It's time to check out now. No, no, strike that. Just twenty meters is plenty. We're right on the cliff. have a bunch going on. Um, I don't know. I mean, looks like maybe an umbrella pathies. I can't know. I think it's just, uh, I think so. Some black coral, some permnoids potentially. That paramarine that we kept seeing. Huge density right here. I wonder why. Um, but yeah, this is the 12 to 4 watch now. This is Sarah. I'm the scientist for this watch. Yep, and I'm Daniel, your science communication fellow. I'm Amber, your video engineer. I am Loopy, your data logger. I am Sarah number two. I am <laughs> the pilot for Atlanta. Sarah with an H. Yeah. With an H. Sarah with an H. Uh, Michael Hannaford, Herc pilot. Uh, Cheyenne Waters, navigator. <laughs> and Dwight Coleman, watch leader. Woohoo! Subbing for Leela. <laughs> Switching on and off. Not sure we can make it all the way to the top before we have to recover. We need to probably get off the bottom uh, by. 1 p.m. So we have about an hour. Oh, all right. Nice. Yeah, I know nice. we're basically full with samples too, so we're kind of just looking around now. Yeah, I must say, all the Niskins are full. Oh wow. Ex well, except for one, but it says not available. So, um, we have Lamba and Omega with samples. Yeah, one of them has the whale bone. Yeah, that's oh, in, that's in Lamba. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Um, in the starboard bio Ooh, box, we have we this? all of those filled. Sure. Sponge. We got two slurs. Go ahead, video. Some cool lobate looking sponge, though. On the still cam, it looks quite a little different. Um, there's an enemy too. Stocked, yeah. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff going here, going on here. Oh wow, definitely a euplectelid. Um, don't know what type actually. All right, we're good. Thank you. Okay. Full wide. Potentially, Bolosoma, but I think, yeah, I want to say actually. No, that stalk is not yellow. Um, a euplectelid. <laughs> you plucked out sponge. But the low bait part of it was really cool. Um, bathopathies to the yeah. lower That's recognizable. center. Yeah. Scrubby brush things. Lots of uh, smaller, but very diverse. Yeah. Super, it's super dense here. I remember on the, the um, you know, the like 12 hours ago, we were seeing kind of the same coral. We were seeing that same paramarisa, that yellow coral, kind of everywhere, yeah. but way less dense. Um, some chrysogorgias as well. Um, I think that's another, yeah, that's another chrysogorgia coming up. 
And they like the slope. Yeah. Super dense here. We were also seeing a lot of sea pens and sea whips, but now this is kind of more um, branching corals, which is neat. Can I get a zoom on this sponge here? Oh. Sure. Is that a sponge? I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. Maybe a coral. The zoom is good here. Go ahead and zoom. Oh, yeah. It looks like a primnoid coral. Don't know what type, but believe that's a primnoid. And then some black coral to the left of it, if we can look at that. Sure. Actually, that might be. Yeah. So this one looks like. Um, just make sure. Yeah, this one looks like it's a black coral. Don't know what type, but that it looks pretty distinct. Um, but I think we just leave it at black coral. I think that's okay. All right, good enough zoom. Thank you. That shrimp right there, he's one in a krillion. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but shrimp are not krill. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> oh, a sea whip. Floating in the wind. So much stuff. And then when you look on the still cam, which is um, just another camera on Hercules that takes really high definition pictures, there's just like so much more. It's pretty wild. What are some of the things that the camera is seeing that we can't? Um, well, from what I remember last night, we were seeing a lot of small, small corals, some really small um, black corals, the, um, or some really small like bamboo and black corals that were kind of like just one long branch, those sea whips. Um, there were some sponges, some cup corals. Um, what else? Just, you know, shrimp, other small things. Go ahead and put in a 10 meter move. Okay. But looks like everything is kind of on the macro scale now. Which is cool. Dwight, what do you think about this rock formation? These rock formations. Yeah. yeah. Looks volcanic to me. Um, definitely covered in uh, ferromanganese coating crust. Um, this looks pretty smoothed over. The steeper slopes get hit by the current and uh, it's sort of sandblasted now and then. So it's uh, eroded a bit. Yeah. Um, don't see any distinct layering. Mm -hmm. Looks like little uh, little pock marks or vesicles, maybe from gas escaping when the lava cooled. Looks cool. kind of like a like a flow, like maybe a layered type of lava flow. I'm guessing. It's really hard to see a lot of geology looking at these uh, these surfaces. Right, right. That's what I was saying last night. Like, much of it looks like lava flows, but at the same time, you know, time happened and a lot of the features have changed. So. That's why often when we look for rock samples, we're looking for stuff that is angular in particular yeah. when it's broken off because that shows that uh, it may have recently been broken off and there might be a fresh surface right, to you study. You start stepping in 20, 30 meter moves. Getting up to the top. Yeah, true. Well, we've been seeing a lot of the Wilsonia or well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's one of the, well, a question. So how long do they take to grow? That is a great question. Mm -hmm. um, 
organisms in the deep sea are very slow growing and often long living. Um, right. Because. <laughs> Two in one area. I didn't run into this one. Wow. Just incredible. That's really amazing. Sorry, Jules, you were saying? Oh, yeah. Um, biochemical processes right. are really slow um, because it is so cold and the pressure is so high and there's no sunlight. Um, so some of these things can live hundreds or even like thousands of years. That's impressive. Thousands may be an exaggeration, maybe like 1,000. <laughs> I will give you a better in, uh, number in a sec. Okay. Oh, thousands is right. Uh, wow. I think. See, that's why I think that the tree ring kind of analogy doesn't work because that you was think? clearly a very old. Uh, Aridogorgia. Yeah. But the base didn't look like it was getting enormous. That's true. Yeah. I think it depends on the type of coral you're looking at because I think, like. Don't they grow from the tips? Mm. Yeah. So, like, in shallower waters, at least, I know that parietes is mm. often, like, used to determine. Uh, age and like climate conditions right yeah those are like the best for looking at climate records so I'm not I'm not sure exactly I think it would depend on what you're looking at um, oh, they're an urchin okay so corals are some of the oldest known marine organisms apparently a colony of black coral was determined to be like 4,300 years old Wow. So they gave a really exact number. They said 4,265 years old. So they had some way to date it. Yeah. To date it. Yeah, especially with black coral, which what is their skeleton made out of? Um That's a good question. Is it calcite aragonite surrounded by some black stuff, or is it? I wonder if it's pertinaceous. Um, I'm gonna like look more Dylan into that. Mine. It's like it's tough stuff. Yeah. Is that a holothurian? It is. Oh, it's that for sighting. For this watch. Wow. Um, this says zoom in, Dave. radiocarbon oh, so dating okay. and growth ring counting. Huh. And that's in a Gorgonian and I and antipetharian, which is a black coral. Adam? Wow. Yeah. A question on the shadow? So yeah, growth ring Is counting. There a way to measure the thickness of the sediment. And they could uh, even calculate growth rate. Okay. E B -b 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 not right here. It would be a it would be an odd measurement because uh well, you know what? Let me just chat with the person in the chat. <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> okay, so black corals have a skeleton made of protein and chitin. Proteinaceous? Mm -hmm. So, gorgonin, I assume. Um, so bamboo corals and antipatharians 
con secrete concentric growth rings in their axial skeletons, which form annually. Can you elaborate? Um, Chat is asking, what is yeah. pro de proteinaceous? Uh, proteinaceous, proteinaceous, like made of protein, protein-based. Um, so gorgonian corals um, have like gorgonin proteins instead of like, like versus scleractinian corals, um, which have more like calcium carbonate, which are more like calcium carbonate based structures. Okay. I wonder what drives Arachinite. annual growth rings because usually that's like a seasonal cycle, like a wet yeah. season and a dry season or something like that in trees. So I mm -hmm. wonder here it seems like stable year round. Right, yeah, that's a really great question. But it could be the the upper ocean is product, you know, production primary production is seasonal. Mm. Oh, okay, yo, uh, Amber just answered. Oh, you got the shot. No worries. That question was more so for when there was a discussion for sure. Oh, oops, I under. Let's look it up. Yeah, it is partially um, dependent on nutrient availability. Bridge and snap. I think that is something that would vary seasonally. You zoom in, Dave? It's my best guess right now. 30 meter is 110. Bond? Oh yeah, Bolosoma. This is a question. This is a good question, I think. Um, how do organic species like the fish we have seen or crustaceans withstand the pressure? We'll try and yeah, they don't have help. They don't have uh, kind of swim bladders and things with yeah. air in them. Ah. So they honestly are no, kind no, of I pressure don't. independent and to a point. Well, there is some kind of parts of animals that break down at high pressure, like transmission through cell walls and things like that. Right. And those organisms oh. adapted to the deep wow. have, He's got have a penthouse view up there. Oh, wow. Another. <laughs> Another. <laughs> no way. Six meters altitude. Dang. Whoa. Some have compressible lungs, apparently. Compressible lungs? Compressible lungs. It's really interesting. But I think, yeah, like Adam said, many lack things like bladders. Right. Um, that would contain air. Deep sea fireworks. Yeah. All <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Seriously. We have a really amazing highlight video on the website. I think titled just that. That are is just incredible series of these Rotogorgia. Probably from this region, actually. Yeah. I feel like every time there's a question like this, I go down a bit of a wormhole mm -hmm. and I'm like, I have to know more about it. That's probably why you're a scientist. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm here. It's 
uh, Prem Noid. Chat, we're right. currently exploring a seamount uh, north northwest at Palmyra Atoll. Paramers today. Adam, Bobby we've got a Black 20 horse. minutes left to watch. You need any rocks? I don't think that we have a spot to put them. Let me take a look. Great. Yeah, are we out of all our uh, 22 minutes? Space. I should say. Oh, they're probably. I don't like to put a rock with a rock, though. Hard to tell them apart. This is just a coral, but maybe. What does that say? Oh, primnoid clip. Yeah, we might be able to fit one more, but I would say let's wait till they get a bit higher up on this thing. Rudder. Go for a sprint for the finish. <laughs> a what? <laughs> sprint finish. Yeah. <laughs> Try and get that extra, extra few feet in. Every time. Okay, we'll put in a final move. I don't think, I think we'll get two more in. Two more moves? Yep. What if I do a 50 meter move? Well, then not. <laughs> <laughs> Bridge nav. Oh. What's up? So Let's do five zero meters, one one zero. Some deep sea fish have something called trimethylamine oxide. Um, which prevents the compression of proteins and other vital molecules. Mm -hmm. No nitrogen absorption. Lung-like swim bladders that can be compressed. Lower metabolic activity, reduced movement, lower heart rate. Compressible lungs. Holding their breath for hours. <laughs> I'm assuming that applies more to things that live shallower and dive mm -hmm. deep. Right, right, sounds like it. So cool. What's really fascinating is how things can survive in extreme environments like right. hydrothermal vents. It's really like another planet. Yeah. What's that thing? Oh, good question. Can we zoom on that, please? Zoom in, Dave. Mushroom. Um, sea star? Slime Looks star? like it. Slime like star. Baby slime star? Baby Aww. slime. Baby slime star. to the next waypoint. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now. Hey. Come on. Sound, oh, sounded wow, a it's bit judgy. Fast. TJ's getting all his hits before he leaves tomorrow. Oh, no. <laughs> We're doing so good today. <laughs> Don't even. <laughs> Look, he's off. Oh, uh, yeah, it's really, wow. really wow. moving. About our same speed. Where are you going? <laughs> Is that max zoom? I like looking at its little max deep speed structures. Too. <laughs> oh, that's fascinating. It looks like it's floating almost. 